What's up guys? I'm John the Potter and welcome back to another pottery video. Can you hear me? Can you hear me okay? I got some some new glazes I'm mixing up. All right, let's take this thing off. We're talking about glaze thickness and how to get it spot on, just right. Let's do it. I swear I wrote this down somewhere. Come on. Oh, this, I must have had this idea a long time ago. Glaze thickness. Here it is. Found it. How many? One, two, three, four, five. We're gonna start with five ways. This could turn into six at some point, depending on how we how this works. But so six ways that I'm testing and constantly thinking about glaze thickness. Because if your glaze thickness is not right, or it's too thick or it's too thin, then you're just not gonna get the results you want. So super important. One thing to note is that you can like get tools like a hydrometer or testing the specific gravity and stuff that like measure it exactly. And I'd rather just eyeball it. So I don't ever test like the exact amount of water that's in the glazes. My tests for glazing, the drip test, the stir test, the dry test, the eye test, and the feel test. All right, let's get into it. Very important to wear a dust mask whenever working around dust, especially glaze mixing. Always wear a dust mask when working with dry clay, dry glazes, anything dusty that you could inhale. Just be safe, wear a mask. Long issues for potters is a real danger. Take it seriously. So this glaze thickness, I know maybe you clicked on this video and you were thinking, oh, I'm gonna learn how to glaze. And this isn't quite like a how to glaze, but this is like, a very, very, very important part because I could teach you how to dip and glaze and do all fancy things, but if you don't understand how to make your glazes the right thickness and how to adjust them, then there's no reason in doing that. So this is just like basic. We need to start here, understand the glaze thickness, and from here we grow our knowledge of how to get sweet drippy glazes. Okay, so test number one is the drip test. And this, I remember learning this method in college on how to test the glaze thickness. So we're gonna mix it up. This is an Albany Brown that I use for my Canyon Skies. So we're gonna dip our finger in there and then pull it up and you should get four, anywhere from four to five drips. And just, so did you see how that drip? One, two, three, four. So four to five drips is about right for so it should coat your finger like thick cream and then it should drip four or five times. So you know that it, it just like all runs off and there's not, it doesn't coat your finger like that. You're probably not supposed to do this either, like get glaze on your hands, but that is how they taught me in college. So you know that if it drips like 10 times, then it's too thin. And if it doesn't drip at all, then it's probably too thick. So that's number one, that is the drip test. All right, ready for number two? What was number two? The stir test. All right, let's use a different glaze for this. So this is a matte white. So the stir test is going to be, we're literally gonna mix it like, so we're mixing it up, stirring it. And then if you watch really closely, can you see that in there? I'm watching how long after I stop stirring it. So I'm gonna stir, 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 stir. How long does it spin before it comes to a complete stop. So that took, you know, eight to 10 seconds probably after I finished stirring it before it stopped swirling. So if you, if you do this and then all of a sudden, like you take it out and it stops right away, then you know that that's probably too thick. And if you spin it, spin it, spin it, and then it just keeps going for a while after, then you know it's too thin. Okay, so this is that Chun Plum. I'm gonna stir. Like right when I stop stirring, the liquid becomes completely still. It doesn't keep swirling at all. So we would wanna just keep adding water to this until we get that swirl for eight to 10 seconds. All right, that's number two. Number three, the dry test. This test is when you dip a piece, how long does the glaze take to dry on the pot? And so basically you don't want it to dry like right away in the first like few seconds, but you don't want it to take like 
10 minutes to dry either. And so this one can kind of depend on the weather, it can depend on how humid it is outside, it can depend on how like, like damp your studio is, or the space that you're glazing. Just for our purposes, let's dip this in to that matte white and we'll see. Glaze tip, always stir. It doesn't matter if that glaze has been sitting for a minute, or 20 minutes, I always stir it before. Some of these glazes can really settle quickly. So we're gonna take our pot that is really, would probably have just been thrown away. Well, it'll be okay. And we're gonna dip it in the matte white. And actually the matte white I know, so you can see it's wet right now. But it should start to dry and the bottom part is already starting to dry, so that's good. So we want it to dry within like that, again, probably 10 to 20 second range. And this again is just general guidelines, like I know certain glazes do different things and whatever, but this is just a general thing to be thinking about. If you're dipping pieces and they're constantly sitting there for 25 minutes wet and you gotta put a fan on them every time, then that glaze is probably just slightly too thick. All right, that's number three, the dry test. What's number four, trusty notebook? The eye test. So the eye test is just looking at the glaze to see what you think. Like, I can tell right now that this chum plum is just too thick. It's just really thick. This looks like a glaze is supposed to look. And if it looks even thinner than that, like if it looks like skim milk or water or something that's really liquidy, then that's too thin. So the eye test is just looking at it saying that just looks too thick. And that just comes from time. It just comes from like glazing stuff over and over and over and figuring it out. Number five is the feel test. You've glazed a pot or two and you have it in your hand. If you kind of rub it and you like can kind of take a little shaving off and it just feels like you're peeling a bunch of glaze off, then that was probably too thick. And then on the reverse end, if you feel it and it feels more like bare clay, like it should feel like there is a layer of something on it. If it's just like totally bare, then that's too thin. I think that's it, I think that's five. There was, I knew there was one more, one more that I thought of that I was like, oh, I do that too. Maybe if I turn the camera off and think about it for a second, I'll. Okay, well, the last one, the bonus one, will be the results test. And that is obviously when you unload the kiln, if everything dripped off of the pot and all over your kiln shelves, then your glaze was too thick. If your glaze doesn't really look that good or if it doesn't quite have the vibrance and the depth that you're going for or the drips that you want, like if you want it to drip over bare clay, then it was too thin. All right, so these are my five ways to test glaze thickness with one bonus and the bonus doesn't really help you that much because you've already fired it. I am constantly adjusting my glazes, like if stuff comes out and it's really too thick and some of the stuff dripped a little bit, then I'll add some water. Um, and then I'll kind of just be doing all these tests, like the drip test, the stir test, the dry test, the eye test, and the feel test. I'll kind of be doing those all the time where I'm looking at the glazes, how do they look, add a little water to it, ooh, that looks a little too thin, maybe I'll leave this one open and let some of the water evaporate out of there. That's the other way that you can either skim water off the top once it kind of settles, or you can leave it open for a few days and let some of the water evaporate off. Yeah, glaze thickness is super, super important. If you, if you wanna get consistent results, if you wanna get good results, if you wanna get really drippy glazes, then you have to kind of dial in your glaze thickness. And you know, there are certain glazes that are gonna look a little thicker than others and be okay. Like I know that the green has a tendency to be too thick, even though it doesn't really look that thick. So I'm always a little more cautious with that one. The blue has a tendency to work out even if it seems really thick, like if I load it on really thick, it still has a tendency to not drip off the pot and still work out. So those are just things I know from working with my glazes a lot. So I would say you can't know your glazes too well and it only comes from time and glazing and figuring it out. But then thinking about these tests, master those and you can master your glaze thickness. All right, hey, thanks you guys for joining me in this video. This is a video I've been wanting to do for a while. This is uh, this will be part two of my glazing series. How about that? This is one of the first things that you have to master if you're gonna master your glazes, is the glaze thickness. So, this is part two. We're gonna do a whole glazing series. That first 
video that I had is probably, the first glazing video that I had is probably the one that you guys found. Most of you found me through that video that has by far the most views on my channel. So, heck, people must really be interested in how to glaze. So I'm gonna do a whole glazing series. This is part two, glaze thickness testing. Hope it helped, comment below, tell me how you test your glaze thickness. If you use a hydrometer, if you use the specific gravity method, how do you do that? I've never even done that before just because this has always worked well for me. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, comment below, I already said comment below, like this video, share it with your friends, hit the bell button to be notified. If you want to support me on Patreon, head over to the Patreon page, link below. And we'll see you in the next video.